Um, I, I definitely had to bring this up. So for everyone out there watching who may not know about me, let's start there, right? I'm Nick Moses 05, for those who don't know. I made a channel a while ago doing gaming videos, a lot of modding tutorials. And I went from there to doing Nintendo Switch homebrew tutorials, which was beautiful because that's what sped up the growth. Then I started doing podcasts, other videos, and going places, and there you go, right? I am a person that has dealt with Nintendo side of getting my ass whooped because Nintendo does not like when you play around with anything around their IP, right? That's real to real. We can all agree on that. This is a new monster at play. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and break down why, all right? For those who do not know about Denuvo Software Solutions, let's just pull up. If you were to Google Denuvo Software Solutions, it says Denuvo Anti-Tamper is a anti-tamper technology and digital rights management scheme developed by Austrian software company, Denuvo Software Solutions, a subsidiary of Erdito. I think that's how you pronounce it, or Erdito? Connect me, I don't know. The company also developed an anti-cheat counterpart. So Denuvo is known for protecting these different, uh, let's say, uh, licenses, okay, whether it be a game, cheating, you know, emulators, it does not matter. Denuvo is there to make sure there is no tampering, anti-tamper, which means they do not want any tampering. They want everything to run exactly as it's designed with no absolute modifications. That's what Denuvo wants. A little history. Denuvo also had issues because there were games that ran a lot slower because they had Denuvo anti tamper protection. That is a fact. Fact, fact, fact. Okay, there are games that were simply broken and could not work because of Denuvo anti tamper protection. That is a fact. Okay. So Denuvo has had their problems. Now, then again, your cheaters, they probably have kept them away. You know, they probably have, you know, if you're an esports type of guy, you probably look at Denuvo and, oh, thank you, Denuvo. I love you. It's, it's maybe what you do. That's maybe what you do, right? But this is something else. This is different. Denuvo sticking their noses in something. That actually, Nintendo has claimed to have no parts of doing. So Nintendo Life, whole article, okay? They stated they had nothing to do. They never reached out to Denuvo. They never spoke to Denuvo. Denuvo found themselves in a situation where they said, you know what, we could jump out in front of this and we can help Nintendo. Right? All right, cool. More power to you. That's how you feel. This is what Denuvo would like to do. So for those who have a Nintendo Switch at hand, don't worry. It's not directed to you, okay? As you may think, Denuvo is coming to my Nintendo Switch and my emulators on my Nintendo Switch. That's not the case, right? It's not the case. It's not the case. They're not doing that, right? They have another target. Their target is to stop the Switch emulators from running on PC. Mm. Wow. So I want to confess something, and this is going to be deep, and I want everybody to listen in. Everybody who has a portable device sometime throughout their life will feel me on this. 
And this is what we're going to touch on right now. Let's get to it. So if you've had a Game Boy, Game Gear, Atari Lynx, uh, you know, what whatever it may be, 3D, you know, 3DS, 2DS, uh, Switch Lite, you know, whatever it may be, Stream Deck, right? You've all looked for a portable solution that does it all. A portable solution that gave you the satisfaction of a console at home. Okay, I mean, you got a lineup of games that's worthy to be a home console, but yet you can still play lightweight games that could play on a TI-82 if you wanted to. You want that wide range of libraries all within one console that's portable, that you could set up at other friends' houses, that you could be able to hook up to their TVs, add joysticks to, and start playing. That is the dream, okay? That's the dream. It's everybody's dream to have that one master device. Now, you might have a a home console to do it. You might have to chug around the big book bag with all the controllers and everything. We do it, and it's cool. But our goal is to have something that we know, hey, our buddy has an Xbox controller, but it doesn't matter. He has a PlayStation controller. It doesn't matter. He has this. It doesn't matter. That's what we want to get to. Recently, guys, my man Dead Specimen was in the chat. Shout out to Dead Specimen. Let me go ahead and give Dead Specimen a couple, couple shots. My man Dead Specimen has predicted a lot of things, okay? He actually was one that predicted Team Executor going to jail, okay? It happened. This dude was young. He predicted it. There's been things he's been wrong on, okay? He goes a little far out there, but that one was good. He was spot on. This was another he was spot on, and I denied it. I tried to, you know, I didn't believe it, but I'm almost certain from hearing from multiple parties, it is true. The Steam Deck is the best portable system in the world. Now, there are portable systems outside of the Steam Deck. There's AO, what is it, AO, AO Neo, or they have one. There's other ones that run Windows, okay? Understandable. Those devices work as well. But I'm not sure the compatibility, right? Haven't had a lot of people get their hands on those. Maybe because, you know, popularity. Steam, I mean, Steam Deck, come on. It's Steam, and we know how many people who play PC games use Steam. So the Steam Deck, I've seen play Nintendo Switch games flawlessly. Damn, flawlessly. I'm talking about flawless, flawless victory. I've seen somebody play Nintendo Switch games, and I go, yo, what's the point of having a Nintendo Switch? You can play it right there on your Steam Deck. And guess what? Nintendo Switch, that would be a hit if you had another portable console that can emulate your games. So therefore, a brand new game comes out, somebody dumps it, you download it, and you're playing the game. Hell, before it even comes out on a device that's not even a Nintendo-approved device. Damn. I can see how that'd be bad. I can see that. I can see that. Right? So I want to say this. Denuvo is jumping in right now to stop that. I think they see this. They see how it's growing. They see how it's taking heed. How many people are using? Um, and I'm going to say, I think it's Ryujinx, which is a very popular Nintendo Switch emulator that everybody's been using. Compatibility is oh, beautiful. They continue to update daily, right? Daily, great updates, great emulator. But guess what? Denuvo is out there to kill. They're out there for a reason. Denuvo seeks things like this. This is where the money's at. So I don't blame Denuvo. This is this is kind of their thing. This is my section, right? This is how I make my money, by securing. And I know right now this is something going on that I know that a company is very protective over. If I jump in the mix, what's the worst that can happen? I get a, you know, little backing by Nintendo if something goes wrong. (laughs) 
you know those ninjas they help out so that's just me so let's go ahead i'm gonna get ready uh to go to the article and then i'm gonna bring my man joe in okay because i see my man joe there so let me go ahead and bring this up because i got the article here um specifically about it and actually i got like four or five articles so i can't even say the article i have so many about it so bingo let's go to euro game right because i don't want to always do like kotaku articles let's do a euro game article right that way we're we're, we're spreading it around we're spreading around the love now shout out to live gan shout you out let me go ahead and give you a call. nice we like that you publish this we thank you keep doing your thug this okay so the company behind controversial anti-piracy software denuvo has announced an innovative solution to the piracy of nintendo switch games on pc erdito today published a press release about his nintendo switch emulator protection solution as a call to developers and publishers who may be interested in including it with their games right so in its statement Ardito targets not only first party and second party switch games but ports of PC games too. So let, I, I just want to hear this article. Let's let's read this. Nintendo consoles have long suffered from piracy issues, and the Switch is no different. The company wrote. I love doing those narrated parts. The company wrote. Even if a game is protected against piracy on its own PC version, the release version on Switch can be emulated from day one and played on PC, therefore bypassing the strong protections offered on the PC version. Now, I want to say this. Protections on the PC version. But I feel you. There's some protection. You know what I mean? There's some protection. Okay, so. The announcement has not gone down well. Ardito's official tweet regarding the news is getting ratio, which is an easy sign of when something's unpopular, with many replies mentioning the effects of Denuvo may have on performance, as with Resident Evil Village last year. Shout out my man, Joe. He brought that up. That was, that was a nice reference. Okay, especially on a console which can already struggle in a performance department. Nintendo Switch is not as strong as an Xbox Series X or a PlayStation 5. The OLED ain't give it a break. Okay? The Nouveau Bayardito launches the first Nintendo Switch emulator protection technology to safeguard games launched on Nintendo Switch. Suck our nuts. <laughs> Damn, the Nouveau is like that. It's like that. Okay, I feel you. We're going to get around it uh read more now you can read more about it as they you know the nice little artwork they put to nuvo you know and they show this beautiful picture man beautiful i'm not gonna lie to nuvo shout out to you kudos that was if if i was actually looking for security right now for my games and you gave me a little pitch like that and you said suck my nuts at the end of it you got my money as soon as he said suck my nuts i would say oh yo they for real that dude's not normal he's a dude that's gonna tell it how it is i want him so nonetheless all right Let's go ahead. Let's, let's, let's go because it's, it's more. To be clear, this isn't something that Nintendo has partnered with Ardito on, so it's unknown how many publishers would choose to include it. Though I can imagine Monolith Soft wishes this was available for Xenoblade Chronicles 3. That's a fact. You can read Ardito's statement in full on its official website. Now, let's go ahead and pull it back up. There's, there's a couple of things I want to talk about. All right. So, um, one, they mentioned um, the security. Let me show you. You know what? I should have done that from the beginning. I don't know what I'm doing. Let me just go ahead and pull up, what is it, Ryujinx? Is that how you pronounce it, Ryujinx? I'm not sure, but let me go ahead and pull them up. I'm, I'm sure they got something on this, right? And everybody follows them, I'm sure. Everybody's following. I'm following them. All right, so I want you to see what they wrote specifically about that article. And my alarm's going off. It's like, hey, you're over time. You're over time. Get to it. Okay. So regarding Erdito's the new announcement, we will continue developing 
an emulation platform for Switch game preservation and enhancement, upon which consumers may enjoy their games both now and beyond the life cycle of the console itself. Oh, smash them! I'm going to tell you what's so gangsta about that. Let me go ahead and pull it up. I'm going to tell you why that's gangsta. That was that was just too gangsta. I'm going to give you a couple gunshots today. I'm going to give you a couple Mario jumps. You get all that. That was gangsta. I'm going to tell you why it's gangsta. Because they made sure to state all of the biggest reasons of why it's important they exist in the first place. They can't argue that. Like Nintendo can't tell you, hey, by the way, your game saved for Kung Fu back in 1987. We got it saved on the server. (laughs) You can't promise me that, Nintendo. It's too many damn games going around. It's too many save states going around for you to be able to handle all that. So understand me, okay? You can't do nothing about it. So you need to allow consumers to handle that. There was a time I remember back in the day for you young bucks, you used to watch TV and you know what? Your show would come on and you go, oh, snap, let me throw in a VCR. Bam, you throw in a VCR, you hit record, and you record your favorite show. It was awesome. You didn't have to wait. You you had the internet before the internet. We click a play button now. Okay, we might get a little better with Fast Forward and Rewind, but we still had it. You click that, bam, you got to watch it again. You want to rewind, you got to rewind it, watch it then. You did not have to wait. And you controlled that as a consumer. You're the one that hit the record button. Okay? Why can't we be allowed to do that with our games? Even if you're streaming, there's a problem at times. Anti-tamper protection against hardware, software, shit. What the hell can we do? Now, I understand piracy is a huge issue. It is the prime reason everybody um, breaks the tamper protection. It is. Let's just admit it. Let's keep it real. It's the prime reason. Most people do. And we've all been pirates in our life. If you have not been a pirate in your life, please come up on this channel and tell me how it has been to, to play games your entire life and not pirate. You either were rich, okay, or you just didn't have any knowledge of how to do it because some of it was so easy. Like, I I literally was playing uh, Quest 2, and someone said, hey, download this. I go, okay. Uh, and I just downloaded something. Next thing you know, I had a damn game for free. I didn't know. I didn't even know. So I was downloading the game for free, and I didn't even know. Tamper protection, all that shit. Bro. So anyways, let me go ahead and um, I'm going to bring on my man Joe. Let me bring on my man Joe. I'm going to have my man Joe say a couple words about this subject. Yo, what up? How What's you going doing? on? Can you hear me? I can hear you. Great, man. Great day. You're not. Hey, you're not working, man. You finally relaxing. Finally. I got home. I got home early, so you know, it's great. Busy nice. fucking week. Oh man. So at least you get to relax and sit down. And I, I want you to go ahead and give me. Do you? What background do you know about Denuvo? I don't know much. Well, you might Denuvo, know a little history. But Denuvo Denuvo is, they're horrible, absolutely horrible. Last year with Resident Evil 8 Village, people were buying the game and asking for refunds back because it was getting 15 to 20 FPS per second. That was fucking horrible. People that bought the game were pirating the game because they couldn't even play it. That's how bad Denova is. It just slows down your whole PC. Imagine Windows 10, but a different flavor. It's just horrible. Everything you do is so bad. If they're going to try to stop piracy for the Switch games with Genova, here's the deal. Um, with the emulation on the computer, the computer is very easy to program with. You don't have to worry about going through certain back doors or whatever because you have an open platform. On a video game system, yeah, that's harder to do. This will be cracked. Um for sure, 100%. Um, team Empress is the only person that can, or not person, but only team that can crack um, De Nova uh, copy protection. They're going to jump on this very quickly. Um, also, Dead Specimen wants to uh, join in. He just said in the private chat. Um, but yeah, it's here's the deal Nintendo already lost because you have the Steam Deck. 
Me and you shat shit on the Steam Deck. Now I'm sorry I didn't get one. <laughs> I know, man. Me too. I, I feel bad, man. We were like, it's not going to be better. We got a Dude, switch that does everything. Eric sent me videos of this, of like all consoles running on there, like really well. And here's the deal with this, with the uh, Steam Deck, you can run cracked PC games. You can have desktop mode and do all that administrative stuff. Because I asked him, can you do that? And he's like, yeah, you can do it. No problem. Works great. Battery life's good. He's going to update the um, internal drive to a one terabyte soon. So. I'm telling you, Nintendo already lost. And it's not going to save the games because here's the deal. If someone's going to pirate, they're going to pirate. That's what it comes down to. Oh, you're going to stop it. Denova's not going to stop it. A cracker is going to crack it. Empress is going to crack it or someone else is going to crack it. Or it's going to be a stupid open door in it. That's true. No, yeah, but here's the deal. One more thing. With Denova, if they implant the copy protection into the firmware, it's going to be easier to remove in the firmware than probably in the games. That's what I'm thinking. Blank it out or something. There's there. I'm, I've been thinking about this in my head for a couple of days. How is the team going to crack this? Either they're going to do it through the firmware or they're going to come up with an, a an application to remove the cop protection through the uh, ROM. Mm. Okay. Now go ahead and bring my man dead specimen. in. Uh, you know who it is? What's Can up, Dad? Okay. So, uh, first off, I just want to apologize for being gone here uh, last week. So, I've been dealing with a lot of shit, but oh, you know, I got some words on this. Oh man! So that specimen, there's, there's a, this one. I, I want, I want you to get that off. I, I have questions to ask you, but first, you predicted this, right? There were others that were along with you, but this was something you were stating from the moment they they announced specs. What made you, you know, a lot of people, they failed before in the past. You said that. You said, I remember their past failure, but you think they're going to get this one right. Why did you think that? I'm going to be real. I don't know what the fuck I said on this topic before <laughs> because th this this shocked me. I, I honestly thought Denuvo just kind of backed off into a corner and they were like, you know, oh, we're just going to, you know, at this point, we're just going to, you know, we're going to give EA, we're going to make EA games shittier than they already are. That's what they've been doing for years. And I thought that that's where they were just going to sit. I haven't heard of any big major Denuvo uh, game releases recently having Denuvo in it. And so I thought they went up and fucked off. And then they decided to go and say, hey, Switch owners, fuck you. Now, uh, my overarching question for this, right? If if I was able, if I was told, specimen, you can go up to the CEO of Denuvo and say one question to them. My question would be, what's the point? The Switch is five years into its life cycle. Any game any person would care to pirate has already been has already come out. Okay, maybe Prime Four, maybe Metroid Prime Four would be a good game to have Denuvo on. No, but they're going to get into, into the um, Breath of the Wild too, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah. But my, my other thing, though, is, and this is something no one's been talking about, and this is what really confuses me. They're, they're so panicked about emulation. Emulation, emulation, emulation. That's the threat. That's the threat. What about chipped switches? I have, a hot, I have a hack switch. Nothing in their press release and nothing in their tweets say anything about modded switches. So you're telling me that I can load up my modded switch and pirate the game just fine and your shitty anti-piracy isn't going to detect anything? But if I load it in an emulator, it will? Uh, cool. You're telling me that I only need a $300 and maybe a $90 device if I have a newer switch to play games instead of a $1,000 gaming computer? Wow, what a steal! Thanks for thanks for basically making my choice easier on how I'm gonna pirate games, Denuvo. You fucking idiots. So let's say this: Nintendo stated they had no input on this. So theoretically, that would mean your first party titles, your Metroid, Breath of the Wild. I'll be back in one second. I get my laptop charger. Yeah, go ahead. You're fine. But that would mean that none of those titles would be included with this anti-tamper protection. Do you think that special? I'm gonna ask you. Do you think this is something that third-party publishers are actually requesting? Not Nintendo. Let's just say you know third-party publishers are worried about. Do you think that's a fact, or do you think that the new votes just kind of sticking their nodes in it for no reason? What do you think? It's some reason that they've come out and it's made a lot of noise. So why do you think so? 
I think EA's uh, CEO probably jizzed over this, but not only that, honestly, um, I, I, I kind of want to go back to what I was saying earlier. I think Denuvo has become irrelevant because I think what people are starting to realize is that game piracy is not the threat that it once was. And even with that, you know, like with, with Game Pass, Game Pass has made game piracy less desirable. It's $10 a month, you know. I, I am I, I, I don't think at least I've been a huge Microsoft fanboy on here, but I definitely am a Microsoft guy. You know, I'm a Nintendo guy as well, but I'm a Microsoft. Well, I'm really a Valve guy, and you know I was sucking the Steam Deck stick before you were, but you know, my my order is Steam, Nintendo, Microsoft. And Microsoft has not made the most consumer friendly decisions in the past years, but I think Game Pass is one of the best things they've ever created because if they were charging twenty, thirty, forty dollars for Game Pass, I'd say that's ridiculous. You're basically paying the same price for a game, and yeah, you get all the games, but you have a keep paying us or we'll take your games away. And I've never really been a huge fan of that. But ten dollars, okay, you're getting into cheap enough territory now where I can actually go, you know what? You're letting me download the games to my hard drive, so I don't have to deal with any cloud bullshit. And as long as you guys get my money, you'll let me play my games. You know what? This is worth it. And I think it's a great service. And it's making piracy less desirable for a lot of people. And mm. so Genuvo and a lot of anti-tamper software has become a lot more relevant recently, especially because all new games coming out basically suck all. So no one wants to pirate them. You know, I think I said this in the chat last week that I, FIFA, the new FIFA games, I, mean, I don't care about sports games to begin with, but even if I did, I wouldn't bother pirating them. Why bother? Why waste your internet? Why waste your time? It's not yeah. worth it. Here's the deal. How would De Nova um, anti-piracy protection horseshit know that's being running through an emulator unless there's a note inside the protection, hey, look for this emulator, hey, look for this emulator. But as soon as this happens, they're going to be able to um, fix this. So, so that And that, that's good. my worry, too, is that, okay, a way a lot of anti-tamper work on, like... ...about getting the uh, Switch games emulator on the PC, but here's the deal. To buy a bare bones gaming PC that runs really good in, on emulation is going to be, let's say, nine hundred to a thousand dollars. To buy a hack switch to get a chip installed, it's like four or five hundred dollars. Or if you're lucky enough to find a version one, you can buy one for three hundred dollars and plug it into the fucking TV and call it a day. Makes no sense. Yeah, and that was the point that I made earlier. But not only that, the other thing I'm thinking is, okay, they're doing this one of two ways. They're either a checking for some variable, right? Because like with SNES games, the way that they detected that you had a, a a copy device attached was that it had, I think it was more SRAM than you were supposed to have. And when it detected that, it would lock up. So they either have to be doing something like that, where they're checking for some setting that a normal switch couldn't do, or they're doing something weird with some way the game's running doing that that freaks me out because what the hell happens if your switch just runs like garbage what if you haven't repasted your switch since you bought it back in november of 20 or uh march of 2017 it, so you're telling me that my switch not running as well as it should is going to gouge my games to think i'm pirating it like how i i this scares me because you can't do the same things on a switch legitimately that you can do on a pc they can do a lot of weird shit with the kernel and all that to check to see if you're doing some weird shit you can't do that facts i'm really worried that they're gonna and that's right you breaking up and you you making yeah. excellent points man you breaking up but i, I was there, dead. i think dead i think dead is dead <laughs> i'm alive i just got bad internet Hey, oh, okay. I, I, I figured I figured it was something, man. And, and you're killing it with the points, man. I will be honest. All of that is true. One thing I would say though, is it possible that it's not just De Nuvo seeking this out randomly? Is it some leeway? Now, Nintendo claims, even it said in that article, they also have another article on Nintendo Life where Nintendo specifically said they ain't have nothing to do with this. Do you think it's possible that, and I know dead from your stance, you're saying that the new votes dead. They see their death coming. And I agree with you on a lot of points of piracy. Microsoft did get it right. They got it right. They let you say, hey, pay 20 bucks for developer mode. <laughs> Load your shit up. Hey, bring all your SNES games, all that 20 bucks. Hey, cool. And they don't seem to deal with the issues, but other systems, PlayStation, Nintendo, 
they kind of deal with this. So I'm with you on the fanboyism of Microsoft. But is it possible these publishers and developers are saying, man, we're not making our fair share and we're tired of it. And maybe it's because the piracy that's going on. Is yep. it- here's, the, here's the deal that pisses me off with Genova. For instance, I have crappy internet here, right? And if I was a legitimate person, like the guy that lives next door, and I paid for all my shit, and I'm playing a Denuva game title, oh, my internet's lagging, oh, can't play the game, you know, not even online, just in single player. I don't play online. So, oh, the game keeps crashing. Oh, your connection Oh, title. Joe, you I got some words for you. What? Okay, think about this, though. They can't be... They can't be doing online because it's a portable console. Imagine if fucking the yeah, DSi had Denuvo mm-hmm. on it. Like you, you. Yeah. They, I, I'll, I'll say this: if they're doing an always online DRM, then they're literally just making this a worthless console. Like, yeah, yeah it's a portable they, console. They, except some games are so paranoid about pir- pirated that you can't play them without internet. Here's I, the deal: I'm gonna do a little prediction here for the Denuvo to work. Maybe they'll put it in Breath of the Wild 2, and it's going to be like Hitman Absolution or whatever that game was called, where you could only play the game on an online server. You know? That could happen. I mean, they're going to piss off a lot of the Zelda fans and shit, but that might happen. Oh, you never know. It's going to kill the Switch. I'm going to say now that's going to kill the Switch as a whole. And I was going to say, performance has been a big thing already for the Switch. Now, they do it offline. You simply just tell the publisher, whether whoever it may be, hell, if I'm a publisher, I'm putting out a game. They just say, hey, Nick, put this into your code. Simple as that. Put it into your code before you even release the game. So the moment I release the game, that anti-tamper protection is already in the code. So shouldn't I be good? Wouldn't that be good enough to keep me? Or how long would that last? How does that work as far as breaking the protection? That's what well, the deal. Here's an, and tin here's, foil. Here's a, oh, you want me to go? Here, you want sorry, to go? Joe, go. Okay, this is what I think. If they implement this in the Nintendo Switch games for the Switch console, Tinfoil will come out with a plug-in that says, hey, you know, run this fake account plus run this, and you'll be all set, ready to go. It's going to be a lot easier to crack this on the Switch with this guy who makes the signature patches than maybe with a, a tinfoil add-on or whatever. But, you know, there's there's no fucking point. The Switch's life is almost over. They need to worry about the new console so we can get SXOS in it. That's specimen. You had something. Well, and since my other thing, I, the way I see things is that I, I really think they go through with this it, it, it's gonna kill the console i i really do one, one thing that a lot of people have i mean people have been talking about performance about you know just how i mean like you said joe the console's almost dead it's almost naturally reached yeah. the end of its life cycle so this just seems like a waste of time but let's also think about this the switch the original switch has like no storage on it so if you look at games pre and post Denuvo, or games that have had cracks that have actually completely removed the Denuvo, Denuvo adds like hundreds of megabytes, hundreds of megabytes to the game files. And so, you have all your games now coming out with Denuvo, that's you're going to have gigabytes of your storage being just wasted by Denuvo. You're right. That was the yeah, big you're one. 100% right about that. With Resident Evil, I believe when they actually took out the Denuvo, it was gigabytes of data. I felt so bad for people playing Resident Evil 8 Village. Their gaming PC was much more powerful than mine is. Mine was built in 2016. They're playing it on 30, you know, 30 XXX graphics cards and everything. They're getting 15 frames per second. I have a cracked Emperor's copy, and I'm getting 60 frames on a a fucking GTX 1080 with 16 gigabytes of RAM and an i7 processor. You know, honestly, yeah. if they really wanted to do this properly, what they would need to do is they need to get it implemented. Get, get it implemented in the first And that way, what you're dealing with is, you know, it, you're not wasting but also you're not wasting resources. Because if you actually have it working directly somewhere, you know, because that's the thing. Okay, in the end, 
if this had no impact on the end user, you could make a DRM that doesn't have an impact on the end user. I shit, because, okay, yeah, haha, funny, I'm the Codex guy, but, like, in the end, okay, yeah, piracy is bad for the, for the, um, for the developer. But the problem is that Denuvo is garbage. Yeah, the online checking system is horrible because, like, for instance, like with me, I don't really have internet. It works sometimes and it doesn't work. I'm on a like a city hotspot with Xfinity. I don't have to pay for internet because I already pay for internet at my um, restaurant and I'm never home. I couldn't play online with those fucking checks. The game would crash. It's fucking retarded. So let me let me play devil's I, advocate I, to both. <laughs> go ahead, Death Specimen. Go ahead. I want to hear what you had today. Oh no! It was it wasn't going to be anything big. It was just basically going to be like, this isn't going to work. Like it's just going to go. It's just going to exist for five minutes. Two games are going to use it. No one's going to buy them because everyone's going to review bombic shit, and then they're going to stop supporting it. And maybe they'll bring it to whatever new switch comes out, or maybe they'll say, yeah, not everyone hates us, including non pirates. We're not going to bother. And once again, I think that having hacks, which is more of a threat model than emulators, so they're not even going after the right thing. So let me ask this now, and I'm going to play devil's advocate. If I am releasing a game, and let's say the game is developed for the Nintendo Switch. As a developer, I know that this console has a piracy market. Okay? And as a developer, I want to make sure that I reap the maximum benefits. I got to pay the publisher. I got to pay these people. I got to pay all these other people. Marketing team, I got to pay all these. So I might get a little cut. So I need maximum profits. I know there is a piracy market. That is a big piracy market. Would I be wrong for adding any? Forget Denuvo. Would I be wrong for adding any anti-tamper protection to my own game whether it hinders performance is another thing but let's just say it doesn't in this case would i be wrong for adding it to my game no because you're a company you can add it there is one way around this i don't want to say it because they're probably watching us for the Denova to work offline, what they can do is they can implement for the switch a dongle on the bottom of the switch, like an RCM loader, where, hey, you got to take around this fucking stupid little thing with you, plug it into your switch, and okay, it gives you the verification check offline. That's the only way they can do an offline verification check, by putting a dongle in. Like back in the day, with, with a really, really expensive uh, computer program, you would have to have a dongle, but then the crackers emulated the dongle. Now, would I be wrong if I just say I put something to break Ryu Jinx or the popular emulators? Let's just say I put something in that I know, hey, Ryu Jinx loads this way. So if you try to load my game, bam, can't load it on the most popular emulator there is. Is that good enough, that specimen? So here's the way I see things, okay? Number one, I don't know if Stephen Jinx is such a threat. You've got 100 million Switch there. And, like, I would argue 90 Switches are not even packed in one way or the other, meaning you can't pirate on them. So you, you have 90 million people, you know, 90 million consoles at least, that you could be selling your game to. And of the, you know, I think I said 1%, and I, I don't know why I said 90 million, so let's fix that, 99 million. You have 1 million yeah. switches. I'm, I'm, I'm just being very general and I'm making up numbers here, but let's just say 1%. You have 1% of hack switches. 500,000 of those are probably people that are still paying for their games anyways. They just have it hacked for pure homebrew and they're not pirates. The rest of them are the pirates. And they're people that probably were never going to buy your game in the first place. I'd say just forget about it. Those are sales you were never going to get in the first place. So, okay, fine. You come up with some perfect anti-whatever that doesn't interfere with the gameplay okay great go ahead i understand that and you know you know i i see why you want to protect your you know your creation and that's totally okay i just think it's a waste of time because you're not i don't think it's going to generate as much revenue 
continues, they think it will. Maybe you'll get one or two extra game sales. And I've talked to a lot of people that emulate their games. They buy their games anyways. They dump their own games, or at worst, they buy the game and then download it technically illegally, but they still bought the fucking game. So, <laughs> you know, a lot of people, they emulate their games just because they, they can get a better experience. They can play the games in 4K or whatever on their PC. They don't do it because they want to pirate. If someone wants to pirate, they just want to get every game and play it as easily as possible. They're going to buy a hack switch, get a 512 gig SD card, load all the ROMs onto it, and then just have what looks like a normal switch just with a bunch of pirated games on it. It, it really, you know, I, I know I keep repeating this, but it really is just a lack of knowledge of the Switch ecosystem. <laughs> that was 99% of us, by the way, Dan Specimenage. <laughs> yeah, that's me, a big one. I got a full ROM set almost. Is there, you just load it up with everything. You just walk around with everything on it. And you're like, oh, yeah, I got it all. Hey, what do you want to play? Hey, Mario from 64 or Super Nintendo? Hey, it doesn't matter. You know, so. Totally it's agree. amazing how Nintendo is going the extra mile. You know, you don't see, you know, PlayStation 5 is this close to being hacked. You don't see them going nuts. So close to being hacked. Nintendo was just like, well, we, don't, we don't know what to do anymore. Stop suing everybody and everybody won't be coming after you and hacking your stuff. That's what it comes down to. And you know what? Nintendo has been very protective over their IP. And they've been lasting through the years. Okay, they've been lasting. It's been a long time. Who am I to say? Okay, you want a hot take? IP. Nick, Nick you want a hot take? <laughs> Give everything it to me, that's, man. I want it. Everything that has happened to Nintendo over the years that they have completely and utterly asked for and deserve. Yes, 100% right, guaranteed, hands down. You now, know, you, like, think, you think, they would, go to, think I, they would go to Microsoft I, and say, hey, how can we improve our security? I'm sure Microsoft wouldn't care because they're fucking bleeding money. Yeah, that's and that's my thing. And here's the thing: from what I've seen, Microsoft has ever only ever once taken serious action against a hacker, and that was when someone had posted, I think, like a full decrypted NANDA dump of the original Xbox back when that console was relevant. And you know what? That's fair. The dude did it on like his university website with his name on it. So yeah, right. fine. Call and, and you know, they didn't even take legal action against him. They called the dude and was like, could you take that down, please? And he did, and he left them alone. So they didn't touch him with the original anyone with the original Xbox, minus a phone call. I don't believe they touched anybody with the 360, minus binning people, which you know what? Do it that way. Do it within the console. Don't start suing people left and right, because they're trying to have fun with your system. And the Xbox One never got hacked. Neither did the Xbox has the Xbox Series X, so they've had no one to touch because they let people do most of the legal shit that people want to do with a modded console, anyways. So Microsoft has done it the right way. Sony's been a little bitch about it, but they've still gotten all their stuff hacked, anyways, and it's kind of funny. And they haven't really done anything recently, but they did sue GeoHot, which I still really hate Sony for. And then you have Nintendo, who would fucking sue you if you said the word Switch incorrectly. <laughs> Now, there is something that you touched on, man. And you brought it up with like Geo Hot and other things, and Nintendo suing others. You know, they're suing people left and right. What do you think it is? Like you mentioned, Microsoft not having to deal with any of the things that these others have to deal with. Nick, pin on Magnus's comment up here. They did this for the 360. The guy that leaked the live source code went to jail and stuff. Okay. Okay, that's deserved though. He leaked source okay. code. That's deserved. So he did go to jail. Okay. Like, now you don't. Say. You don't like. It's one. It's one thing to develop a jailbreak for a console. It's one thing to hack into a company. Like the people who hacked into Nintendo and leaked all their shit. Okay, cool. Glad we have all that. But at the same time, you did. You did commit. Uh, many cyber crimes doing that that had a actual impact on the company it's not a serious impact on the company to jailbreak a console it is to hack into their systems that, that there's a, a distinction between that i just want to make that clear no i agree with you here's the deal back in the day you couldn't get on a ps3 you couldn't get over 3.55 for a very very long time and the reason why we still have a hard cfw on a higher firmware was a Chinese coder leaked the firmware key, the actual real long 400 key or whatever the fuck it was called. I don't remember what it was called. And thanks to that one person, we have a hard CFW on latest firmware. That one person did all this. 
And I don't think he was yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm uh, willing to, to have if 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 our custom firmware development for literally any console gets slowed down because people aren't hacking into companies and leaking keys, I'd be okay with that. Atmosphere got developed in a completely clean way with no weird tricks. It was done with the console and whatever tools they could get their hands on to manipulate the console. And while, again, I have my, my gripes with the, with the Atmosphere team, at least they did it in a completely legal, safe, and ethical way. I, I have a problem with custom firmware getting developed because someone hacked into Sony and stole a key from them. That, that's just not okay. I agree with you 120%. So let me ask you both this. I'm not sure if you both are familiar with how the games launch in the system, but we have seen PlayStation 4 games pirated like crazy, okay, left and right. We've seen Nintendo Switch games pirated like crazy. Uh, Xbox 360, we've seen a lot of pirating, but since the Xbox One and the Series X and these different ones, we have not seen the piracy. Now, is it because Microsoft has changed their launch methods of the game? So, for instance, it runs in like a virtual sandbox environment to where if everything's not perfect and conditions are not met, the game doesn't run. And others are not doing that. There has to be something there with Microsoft to where we're seeing not even the Xbox One. I know. think I, the Microsoft security is tighter than a nun's asshole. Because here's the deal. <laughs> I can't resist that. Um, it's been like what over like 10 years. I don't know when the I don't know when the Xbox One came out, but it's like ridiculous. They, you haven't cracked you haven't cracked the Xbox One, but motherfucker, the PS5 is just close to being cracked. This fucking close. I, I know What's why. I know exactly I know why exactly. It's for three reasons. Look. Two of them relating to the Xbox, and like, one relating to the PlayStation. Um, the reason why Xbox stuff hasn't been cracked is because at least two, at least one third of the people who would hack a system have been deterred. There's three main reasons people hack a console: emulation, piracy, homebrew. Uh, emulation's already been solved because of the twenty dollar developer developer mode. It's not the cleanest way to do it, but you know what? If you can buy a three hundred four. $500 console, you can fork over 20 bucks for a developer mode, and then you can load up RetroArch, and you've got basically any emulator you'd ever want. So, those people who would want to hack a console for that, they don't care about the Xbox One because their way to hack it is $20. Yeah, there's, but there's a those, those, oh, one second. There's a problem with developer mode now. If you pay them the $20 for developer mode, they put a timer on your Xbox. If you don't publish anything in six months, they delete your account and you can never get it back. I thought they reverted that. I have no idea. Maybe they did, maybe they didn't. I'm not really sure. That, that, was, that was a big thing for a while, but then apparently they started reinstating people's accounts and it was an accident. Okay. So I remember um, I heard that a while ago. I'm like, how the fuck can you do that to somebody? Yeah, I, I hope I'm correct on that. But from what I saw, someone contacted them and, and, and a lot of people contacted them and they're like, yeah, this isn't supposed to be happening. We're going we're gonna to revert it. Well, um, that he says he think they did so Magnus is probably right because that that definitely happened. I I know that happened. I watched that go down, but I swear on my life they reverted that. But if they didn't, I'm going to be really disappointed. Um, but if they do though, then they're making the exact same mistake Sony did with the PS3 and with the other OS. Like literally the exact same mistake. You know, other OS allowed you to run Homebrew. This is allowing you to run emulation. Yeah, I remember that. So, back. but. Let's let's assume let's just assume I'm correct because it it makes my point easier. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have people who want emulation, right? You don't have them wanting to hack the system. Homebrew, kind of, because UWP is a bitch out for. But if you really really want to make homebrew for the console, you physically are able to. So now no one wants to make UWP shit, but it is available. So a lot of homebrew devs just don't care. So who do you have left? You have piracy and there's not a lot of piracy hackers out there. And look, say what you want, but con team executor was kind of that group, the gateway team or whatever. They were kind of that group. And now a lot of them are gone. There's not a lot of people out there who are willing to hack a console for piracy, especially when you need to sell a physical device. It's a lot easier to anonymously upload files to websites other people host. It's a lot harder to get a product manufactured and sold to people. So when you only have one or maybe one and a half 
of the three groups of hackers that you need to want to mod a console, it's very unlikely it's going to get hacked. And then to add to that, even for the piracy people, UWP is notoriously difficult to crack because that's both game protection and the actual operating system pretending protecting the game. I remember that there were a lot of UWP cracked games that Windows updates would make the crack stop working. Windows would be changed so the crack stopped working. And so all Microsoft would need to do it would need to update their console, which that thing is so fucking connected online that, that basically it wouldn't be possible for you to take it offline. And they could stop the piracy. So yeah, because yeah. of UWP and their online DRM and the fact that a lot of the hacker groups aren't there, I don't think we'll ever see that Series X or the Xbox One get a major hack ever. No, you're 100% right. And that's the thing that pisses me off with the Series X. No lie, Nick, it's still in the box. I can't even play it because I have no internet. So it's like actually like if the Xbox magically got hacked tomorrow, I'd be able to hack it because it's still on – whatever, I don't know what the latest firmware of the Series X is, but it's on not even the first build. It's on probably on a beta. <laughs> um, just like that, the DRM shit pisses me off because for the people that don't have internet, and there are people that don't have internet or shitty internet like myself or people overseas in the military, it's like you can't fucking like, oh, I'm sorry, you know, you're serving for your shitty country that you shouldn't serve for. But you can't use this because you have no internet. It's the whole DRM internet thing really pisses me off. And you know, so, it's just like you can't do here, that. Here's the other thing too that I was gonna mention for the PlayStation side. These windows. They use FreeBSD, which is a, like, I think it might be Linux-based, but it, I, it might be, like, a force, like, a, like you have Windows, Mac, Linux, and then I think FreeBSD is, like, its own thing. And it's an open-source operating system, so people can look in it and look for bugs, and if there's a bug in the PS, at least four, I don't know if the 5 is, still is, but I think it's still FreeBSD-based. If someone finds an exploit with the PS5, they found a FreeBSD exploit and vice versa. So if I wanted to, I could go look through the latest version of FreeBSD, find some sort of exploit, and if I can find a kernel exploit in it, I just gotta go find a WebKit exploit. Once I got both, bam, hack the PS5. It's nowhere near, and also the they, I guess it's a lot easier to get game packages or whatever for the PS5. So Sony's kind of shooting themselves in the foot by not developing a custom OS, which, granted, that worked out great for Nintendo, but that also was mostly NVIDIA's fault, so you win some, you lose some, but I mean, it's, <laughs> I don't think their console would have been hacked like six months to a year out of the gate if it wasn't for the fact that they were using an open source operating system. And yes, I, you ask any security expert, security by obscurity, AKA, we don't have our program open source and we tell no one how to, how it works so they can't find exploits. It's never really a good method of security, but fucking dently it's worked well for Microsoft. So, yep. I would say you nailed it with that answer. And a lot of people, you know, wonder, me, myself, is it just the security of Microsoft is better? But you mentioned the UWP packages and how that is. I agree. Have seen it on my PC myself. You're right. Update breaks it. Now you have to go through and update the game and everything else before you can play it. That's a beautiful example. The amount of people. You're right. There's not. I don't run across people. You know, it used to be a time where everyone says, man, I want to hack my Xbox Series X. Man, I want to hack my Xbox One. It's getting less and less. It's the younger generation. You know why? They're fucking lazy. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. Dog, I'm I am the younger you. generation. No, yeah, but I, mean, I, would say, I would say, I think the younger generation, like, think of the Steam Deck. That is everything. You know, when you look at the Steam Deck, and which that's oh. best, give him credit you mentioned before. Uh, beautiful, but you have something to say about the, the Steam Deck. Go ahead, because I, I forgot to I, mention that before we were talking about. I that. let me tell you what, I could not have been more happy to be right, and this, this isn't even me gloating about being right. It's the fact that Steam did everything I wanted and more. You can put Windows on it. I would never do that i'd rather kill myself to put wins on the steam deck but you can they said fuck it they let you replace parts in it they partnered with i fix it they did everything to say look man we just want to sell you a good product do whatever the fuck you want with it if you fuck it up that's on you buddy 
play, but you know what? You want to put Windows on it? Go ahead. You want to load it up with Discord or whatever third-party software you want? Go ahead. You want to be a complete and utter fucking loser and put Windows on it? Go right ahead. They let you do whatever you want. It is my... Dude, I tell you what, as soon as I'm getting a steady income, I'm buying a Steam Deck. I don't even give a shit if I'm ever going to use it. I just want it because these fuck valve has put themselves in a position where they deserve my money <laughs> like, you could not have you you could not have made a more giant middle finger to the other game console companies than the steam deck oh man you the steam deck can do so much stuff uh eric sent me some videos of it and the shit's amazing dreamcast emulation um sega saturn's hard to emulate that's working out pretty good a lot of good emulation on there you know also, he did some, um, I think, Xbox 360 emulation on there. I kind of forget. It was a couple of weeks ago. But it's like definitely, like, I'm kicking myself. Switch out. emulation. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Switch emulation is beautiful. I've seen it. Look good. Biggest, the biggest thing I love is running the um, the Fit Girl and also the um, Skid Row repacks. Because I'm all about the repacks, man. It's yeah, funny, though, is when... Up. Switch was copying or fucking whatever it was called, their phone. Watch Nintendo turn right around and sue St uh, Valve because of the Steam Deck, and they wouldn't have done it, but now because so many people are emulating it, they're basically like, oh, you guys wanted this to happen. 100% right. Yeah, I can see that three weeks later. Oh, Nintendo suing over patent and copyright infringement, these fucking bastards. No, you know what? I can see that. Big business speaks and all. You know, Steam has to do is release some patch, you know. Hey, now we release this patch. You know, it's anti-tamper protection for Nintendo Switch games. and Except we'll now, fuck you, I switched to Windows. <laughs> well, that's the thing. That's the other thing, too. And that people don't, at least I haven't seen people do, is that, right, people are talking about, like, oh, you know, you could run Steam OS, and it runs great, but hey, if you really want to, you can switch to Windows. You can also just switch to a different Linux distribution. It's 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 a it's a, it's, a, it's got PC hardware. Any Linux distribution will work just fine on it. You might need to get some drivers installed, but like basically the way that Valve has released this, and thank God they have. But I mean, they really don't have much control over the hardware at all, or the software. It's a very well customized version of Linux, but that's all it is. They didn't put any restrictions on the hardware, which I hope they. Ever do i hope they stick to that because god knows how many times that they've started out you know companies start out with that and then they get scared because of something and they start restricting they've made pretty much unrestricted hardware it comes with basically unrestricted software but if you really don't like their customization you can change it out and so i yeah i mean i don't see them doing anything I'll, what i see valve doing if nintendo says anything if they can prove that the, the hardware design doesn't infringe on anything they basically just got to say dude we're selling pcs you're really going to sell a pc man sue a pc manufacturer because people are doing shit with a pc that they could do on a, a normal tower i agree that's gonna be hard to prove also, that's the, hard. the ai no, no, no yeah how you ever pronounce that that you're talking about before nick the ay neo what yeah, that's how you pronounce it. They're also coming out with a new um, deck, whatever the fuck you want to call it, handheld. MVG did a video about it, but the Steam Deck still outperforms that new handheld that costs more money, so there's no point of even buying that newer version of it because it's having a really hard time emulating. So it's kind of like, what's the point of doing that? And they're handheld, mostly that's what they uh, target. The, the audience has emulation and on Windows. But it's just like it's cheaper to buy a Steam Deck, and the results are like thirty-five percent better. So you're better off buying the Steam Deck. Well said. Now, Joe, Dead Specimen. Any last words? Well, like and subscribe to Nick Moses 05. Catch us on the Facebook page. Um, if anybody's wondering, Eric's taking a break. Um, he's doing family stuff. I'm not saying when he's coming back or whatever. But I haven't had time. I'm going to post the um, the new repacks. They're not new repacks. They're just the ones from last month because a lot of people have been PMing me. Um, one for the OLED and one for the um, version one unpatched. Cool. Man, salute. Dead Specimen, any last words? Fuck Denuvo. Fuck Nintendo. We love Steam. Buy a Steam Deck or I will squat in your house. And also, sub to Moses. <laughs> 
Shout out, man. Both of you gentlemen, man. Enjoy your day. And we're going to keep this Love show. Love the show as always. Take care, gentlemen. I'll let you Bye. Oh, man. Both of them, man. Both of those gentlemen represent, man. Let's get them a couple gunshots up with me and all that. Dig it, that up, specimen is Joe. Yo, Young OG came with it today. Young OG came with it. Solid points. A lot of solid points he got. I mean, I'm going to be honest. Um, it is kind of late. I think Nintendo Switch is on the end. I don't think it's going to last much longer. Um, so why do this anti-tamper protection now? Are you preparing for something? Are you on your deathbed and you're reaching for anything to stick to? Something. Because I'm not going to lie, it's, it's a little too late. If you'd have been doing that a while ago, it might have been different. We do have big titles being released on Nintendo, but it said Nintendo had nothing to do with it. So if Nintendo has nothing to do with it, that means their first party titles will not even be affected. So it would, it would probably be third party. Do you see a third party publisher doing or I don't know. But nonetheless, you know, De novo, shout out to you. Do your thug dizzle, do whatever it is. I'll give you a bomb. Hopefully you don't screw up and you at least make some living for yourself. And it's good. And you actually help. That's what I gotta say. Okay.